Hey there, everybody, and welcome to this afternoon's webinar um, here about TikTok and leveraging TikTok for recruitment marketing. I am Sam Byler. I am the CEO and co-founder of Boostpoint and excited to talk to everyone um, today about social media recruiting, TikTok specifically. So um, one thing uh, to, we're going to be uh, announcing at the end of this webinar, how you can get early access to leveraging TikTok, uh, recruitment marketing and advertising through Boostpoint, our platform. Um, we are extending our beta access to leveraging TikTok. TikTok. Um, and so stick around to the end. We're going to show you how to request access to that. Excited about that. Um, but the meet here, we are going to be talking about the, what we've learned over the past 12 months of testing TikTok advertising, targeted ads on TikTok, specifically for recruitment marketing um, to attract passive candidates for your uh, candidate pipeline. Um, so that's that's the data. That's kind of the, the the base of what we have. What I'm going to be talking about here today. Um, first of all, let's talk about kind of social media recruiting as a whole. So there's a lot of different social media platforms out there. Obviously, some of the biggest ones you've got Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat, TikTok in the mix. One of the fastest growing ones currently. Um, and historically, so Boostpoint, we are a social media advertising platform. This is what we do, recruitment advertising through social media. Um, and so the approach that, that we've taken is to leverage the platforms that get the best ROI from your advertising dollar. And so historically, Facebook and Instagram, those have been the main platforms that you're going to be get the most out of your advertising dollar um, when you're investing in recruitment advertising. TikTok is a platform that we've been analyzing, though, um, for the past two, three years. And we've been getting paying closer attention to it, especially the past 12, 18 months. And so about a year ago, we launched, a, a, a started testing this platform um, with recruitment advertising. And honestly, the, the, the initial like data points that we started seeing, you know, months ago, I was actually quite surprised. It's, it was, I, I you know, we've seen TikTok um, trending upward and I, you know, it was inevitable that, you know, advertising on this platform was going to, you know, start to take over. I was just a little surprised how quickly. Um, and so a, a little bit of backstory on TikTok, like why TikTok, you know, when you compare it to some of the other advertising channels. So TikTok is the fastest growing social media channel, you know, the past 12 months. Right now you have uh, over 150, 50 million active users um, in the US, and that's up from 100 million that they had in 2020. So their user base is growing quite quickly. Um, and it's it's a super young audience as well. Like most of most of the TikTok audience is um, under 30 years of age. And so it's a fast growing audience and tends to be a younger audience as well. Um, quick note, I forgot to mention um, at the beginning here, we are going to be doing a Q&A um, towards the end. I'm going to have about 10, 15 minutes of Q&A at the end. So if there is a question um, that you have, go ahead in the Q&A section at the bottom of the, the Zoom webinar screen, go ahead and type that question in, and then I'll be addressing those um, at the end. Um, all right. So back to TikTok again, TikTok, one of the fastest growing, huge, huge growth, especially in the U S over the past two years. And I'll, I'm going to be talking a little bit. I know TikTok has been in the news a lot lately, especially, um, in the, the U S talking about potentially banning the platform. So I'm going to touch on that here towards the end of the webinar. Um, but first of all, just wanted to talk specifically about what we found on the advertising side, you know, testing the platform over the past 12 months and ways to be successful with it as well. Um, so let's jump right into that. How, how can you be successful leveraging TikTok for recruitment marketing? So there's always, when I talk about social media recruitment, I'm always thinking about it through two lens, two, two specific lenses. One is you have the organic side um, and building or, an organic brand and organic traction 
on these platforms. And then you have the paid side as well. What we really focus on is the, the, the paid advertising side of social media platforms. And that's what I'm going to dig into specifically um, here today is the advertising side. So every social media platform, um, their, the majority of their revenue is advertising based revenue. So how advertising works on social media platforms is, you know, you can sponsor your content as sponsored ads, um, you know, on these platforms by investing in advertising dollars. So when sc someone's scrolling through the news feed of Facebook, or you're sc scrolling through the TikTok videos, every several posts, you'll see a sponsored ad. And that's, that's the advertising engine of these social media platforms and how they make money. Um, so that's the type of content that, that we specifically have really leaned into leveraging the TikTok platform um, is spending advertising dollars and what is the best way to get a return on your investment in regard to recruitment marketing. So this really comes down to, you know, measuring things like cost per applicant, cost per hire, and things like that from your advertising dollar um, with, with TikTok. So but let's jump right into, you know, what it takes to be successful with, with TikTok. The main thing with TikTok, it's magnified with TikTok even versus other social media platforms is content, content, content. The type of content that you're actually leveraging for your ads has everything to do with the performance of your ads. So with, with TikTok, especially since you're running recruitment marketing, it will fit under their special ad category. Um, it's an employment ad and that fits under their special ad category, which limits some of the targeting criteria that you can leverage within the advertising platform. This is very similar to Meta as well. Um, several years ago, um, they came out with their special ad category, which includes um, employment ads, housing opportunities, political ads, things like that, which basically limits some of the targeting criteria that you can leverage for targeting an audience with your ads. Tim, uh, sorry, TikTok is similar to Meta in, in that way. So they really limit the criteria type of criteria, things you, know, you can't um, target a specific age range. Um, you can't target a specific demographic as far as like types of individuals. TikTok though, one thing I will note here that's worth noting is you can't advertise to anyone under the age of 18 years old. So that is a positive for recruitment advertising is, you know, you can be assured that none of your advertising dollars is wasted um, to people that are under the age of 18 years old. But again, you're somewhat limited in your targeting criteria. You know, you, a, a lot of social media advertising, you know, you can do intent-based and behavioral-based um, targeting, um, where you can really, you know, dial in, you know, some of the audiences um, that you're targeting. Again, you can do that in, in a limited way, basically. Um, it, they just take away a lot of the targeting criteria. So it's, it's a more broad audience versus, you know, maybe consumer facing advertising versus employment advertising. You can still be targeted with geography though. That, that's a, a big positive um, with TikTok, they've actually keep honing that in, making their geography-based targeting um, better and better. So you, you can target, you know, specific areas with advertising, which is uh, super valuable. So, but taking, you know, having limitations around targeting, I will say the ad algorithms of these platforms, I've, I've seen get better over the years, even with a fairly broad audience. So one of the ways that um, these targeting algorithms work, even within TikTok, is based on the engagement of your ads. They will hone that audience in to show your ad to people that are similar to the individuals that are engaging with your ad. So even though you start with a very broad audience, 
first couple of days that your that your ad is run, it goes through this learning phase, which kind of hones in the targeting um, for your ad as the, the the ad continues to run. But getting back to content being everything as far as you know, really tracking ROI or getting ROI from your ads. And I'm going to jump into here, show a couple examples of the type of content that we've really seen pop and engage with um, your, your audience um, to capture their attention about your employment opportunities, ultimately get them to apply, ultimately get people hired from social media advertising. But let's first talk about different types of, of content that, that you can produce um, for, for TikTok specifically. Number one is it's, it's all video. Um, so that's another unique thing about TikTok is, you know, you, you can't launch photo ads or, you know, just text-based ads, you know, in Indeed ads, ZipRecruiter ads, Google ads, you know, it can be a little easier to produce advertising content sometimes on these platforms because there's just text-based. Um, Facebook and Instagram, you know, you can do, use images in ads, TikTok, you have to use video. Um, so for some TA teams, that can be a little bit of a hurdle because sometimes it's, it takes more energy to produce video content than maybe photo or, or text-based content. So we know our lim we're limited with, with video. Um, video is, is, is a, a very unique <laughs> um, piece of content to create because there's so many variations of types of videos you can use um, in advertising from a creative perspective. You know, historically, um, any type of video used in advertising was very produced. You know, the production value of a video kind of needed to be at a certain level in order for it to be acceptable for advertising. This, this has kind of been because of you know, TV advertising, um, you know, you, you watch a, a TV you know, show or um, a certain channel and everything is super produced, you know, different camera angles. Um, everything is just shot where it's, it's very well produced. And so historically, when we think of creating video ads, ads within the TV platform needed to match that production value. Um, and so that really makes sense for that specific channel. Social media, on the other hand, is completely and entirely different. Where I've seen this mistake being made very commonly is people take that approach of TV ads and try to bring that approach to social media advertising, where you're producing maybe a full minute or five minute you know, video and taking the same high production value type of video content and leveraging that in a social media ad. Because that's not the context of the content within these social media platforms, those videos do not produce what you want them to when you look at your ad um, return on investment. The reason why is, again, I don't know how many of you who are watching, you know, use TikTok on a daily basis or even Facebook, Instagram, any of these platforms. If you're scrolling through your newsfeed or scrolling through stories, very most of the content you're scrolling through is produced by this device right here, a cell phone shot in vertical format. So that's the context of the video content on these platforms. So therefore the types of ads that are, that you're running within these platforms need to match that type of style and production um, with your, your advertise, advertising um, videos as well. We've, again, this is, I've seen this firsthand um, and it's, it's quite mind boggling. You know, you can have the exact same audience with the exact same ad text, even the, the same like video, um, a vertical video. So the same aspect ratio, but the style of video, you know, going from a very highly produced 
you know, video to something a bit more selfie style, quote unquote, for the lack of a better term, you know, just shot on, you know, a, even a cell phone I've seen, the less produced, you know, video we've seen get 10x the, the amount of impressions and applicants results than something that is, is very well produced. But again, you just put yourself in the shoes of the viewer, you know, on TikTok. I often challenge creative teams when they're making recruitment videos um, for, for TikTok is spend a couple minutes scrolling through um, TikTok before you go into your brainstorming session of what type of videos you're going to create um, for your ads. You'll just get again, looking at it through the lens of the user and the viewer and creating something that will, that will again, fit the context of the platform. <clears throat> You're going to be way ahead of, you know, other pieces of content that you, you might naturally produce, you know, th that you've produced on other platforms. I am going to take a second here and go ahead and share a couple pieces just as examples to give you a visual example of what something can look like um, for, for your ads. Just give me one second here, pulling this up. And here we go. All right, so I'm just gonna play this video. Again, timing is huge here as well. You're gonna see this is under 10 seconds, this video right here. Service representative in your area. There's great pay, great benefits. Inviting people. So again, th this person talking right here, super straightforward. Hey, we're hiring customer service reps in your area. Great benefits, great pay. Talking a bit about you know the highlights of the position and then just inviting the person to apply by clicking below. Um, a couple other things I wanted to note here as well is, um, again, you look at, you know, you're scrolling through the TikTok platform, 80% of the videos will have some sort of text on screen on the upper hand, um, upper end of the video. So again, we're matching that with this video right here. Where we're talking about, hey, at first glance, someone understands this ad is about hiring customer service reps. Um, and so, you know, leveraging things like that, I'll pull up another example right here. Just give me a second. Again, this is very similar just for a different type of position. Sorry about that. Again, what you'll find here then is you can kind of get in the rhythm of creating templates, style templates, for your videos as well. That's one of the nice things, you know, once you dial in um, really the, the style that works, you can start replicating this and you don't have to, you know, start from scratch, you know, every time you're looking to produce a piece of content. Um, a couple other things I wanted to know in relation to a video like this, again, these videos, they're, they're not overproduced. <laughs> so they're very simple. Um, in, in how they're created. A couple key things though that, that you want to make sure you're accomplishing is number one, super clean audio. Like you want somebody to um, you know clearly hear what this person is saying. So again, I don't often recommend you know just recording from your phone. Again, you can do that. You know, but if you're doing that, maybe use an external microphone just so that there's clear audio. Um, stable shot as well. You know, maybe use a tripod or something like that um, that you could still kind of hold in that way. But a couple of things like that that you do want to note that you want to realize this is on behalf of, you know, you're building an employer brand. So you, you want the videos to still be polished in the way that you know, the audio is clean um, and that there's not a whole lot of distractions in the background is usually another key element to producing still a, a quality video, but still in the format and context that, um, you know, TikTok users will, will engage with. Just give me a second here. All right, so let, let's talk about some of some of the results then, because a lot of this comes down to 
Um, yes, I, I know there's an issue, you know, a lot of executive teams, you know, are trying to focus on passive recruiting, recruiting passive candidates, um, leveraging, you know, newer recruiting tactics, social media recruiting is, you know, on a lot of, on a lot of HRTA teams agenda. Um, and just be, again, needing to expand your the horizon of the type of candidates that you're getting in front of. It really still all does come down to results, like filling the candidate pipeline. One of the things I am passionate about personally is, you know, in recruitment advertising, measuring what matters um, and measuring things more than just brand impact, you know, things like impressions and reach, but the things that really matter to the TA teams and executives that I talk with on a daily basis is how are we actually finding candidates to bring into our pipeline that are qualified for our positions? And can social media be a an avenue and a channel just like you know online job boards and you know maybe your the careers page on your website? And what we found is done in the right way? Absolutely. Absolutely. So a, a couple of key things to, to, to keep in mind as you're thinking about that, building a successful strategy is making sure you're, um, you're really focusing mainly on the candidate journey. Like how, instead of thinking about, hey, what's the the easiest, you know, maybe route for our own internal processes is really mirroring the experience to be most beneficial for the candidate and the applicant. And so examples of what that can practically look like is number one, we talked about here is, is your content, you know, making sure that the type of content you're producing really fits within the context of the 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 social media channels that you're advertising on things like the proper conversion method as well is super important i'm also going to pull up um another example right here give me a sec of what that can look like and sorry about that i thought i had this right on my dashboard here we go. And pulling it up right now. Sorry about the pause. And here we go. Again, I want to pull this up just to share what a candidate journey and the preferred applicant experience through a social media ad can look like. So we talked about the creative here, step one. Step two is the the conversion method is extremely important too. Like if you're really looking to fill your candidate pipeline and get more than just impressions, you're gonna have to think about your conversion experience. So one that we really recommend is leveraging the internal conversion pages of these social media platforms and creating like a quick apply like experience. So what that can look like here is, you know, they click on the ad, they're directed to still within the TikTok or Facebook, Instagram, whatever platform they're seeing your ad on. They're still within that platform, but then a, a form um, is pulled up where they can input their contact information and you know any qualifying questions that you might want to ask to pre-qualify the candidates as they're coming in. But leveraging these types of conversion experiences versus maybe sending them to your careers page where they need to click, you know, five, 10 more times to fill out a full application um, or, you know, create a login maybe in your ATS. You're going to see a huge drop off if you're leveraging some of those other conversion methods versus these quick apply like experiences within the social media platforms. The third thing I wanted to mention here as well is the connection with the candidates and the speed to connect with them is also super important. We've, we've seen, especially this is true for like high volume hiring um, is an hourly positions. 
the time that you engage with the candidate and, and shortening that time period greatly increases your chances of, uh, of interviewing that person and ultimately increasing your hire rate and hiring these candidates. So um, we, we often, we encourage all of our customers to also leverage automated text messaging um, within their hiring process to at least initially engage with that candidate so that you're creating this candidate experience where they're seeing your TikTok ad, they click on it, they take, you know, about 30 seconds to fill out your quick application within their platform, click apply. And then while they still have their phone in their hand, maybe they're back scrolling through TikTok, they receive a text message, an automated text message kind of from your, from your recruitment team um, to engage with them. So that's really what we recommend from an applicant experience. Once you tie all these things together, that's where you're going to start seeing hiring metrics that make sense from a dollar standpoint for your recruitment um, advertising budget. Um, we've seen taking that approach, companies will often see better cost per applicant, better cost per hire metrics, even than Indeed and other on, <clears throat> online job board um, platforms. But all these things really need to be dialed in for to, to be able to see those metrics. And again, it's, tying all these things together is super important. Um, you know, I've seen a lot of teams kind of give up um, just because one of these things was out of line. You know, you could be spending a thousand dollars, you know, and getting five candidates versus spending a thousand dollars and getting a hundred um, or 150 candidates based on, Hey, is your, is your video um, the right type of video, or are you leveraging the right type of conversion method? I've literally seen about 10 to 15 X like difference in, in, cost per applicant and cost per hire, just because one of these elements was, wasn't in play um, with the advertising strategy. All right. So in summary, um, actually, sorry, jumping ahead of myself a little bit. I did want to spend about five minutes to just talk about the state of TikTok right now. Um, so TikTok has been in the news a lot lately. So on December 13th, um, two U.S. senators introduced a bill that would ban the TikTok platform entirely in the U.S. So then in March, um, just a couple of weeks ago, March 23rd, TikTok CEO um, actually testified before Congress and right now it's still up in the air what will actually happen there. Some people are saying, oh, it's going to be impossible um, to ban TikTok in the U.S. because it has so much penetration in our culture, over 150 million active users in the U.S. right now. So it has infiltrated our culture um, a lot. Um other people are like, no, they'll get this accomplished. You know, there's they, laws in place that, you know, you can actually pull this off. Um, it's too early on to be able to predict, you know, what that will be. So I'm not going to stand here and kind of make a prediction. To me, it's still very much up in the air what will actually happen if TikTok will be banned in the U.S. or not. Um, the way I'm encouraging the companies we work with is if you, if you, Leverage TikTok right now, you're super early. And there are a lot of advantages to jumping in on a platform where you can see early results and early benefits. Like your, your cost per and your ROI is just extremely significant early on most times with these platforms. And that's what we're seeing right now. But this reminds me so much of 10 years ago, Facebook advertising, where your 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 metrics were out of the world like positive um, because very few brands were leveraging um, advertising on these platforms. This is the moment right now for TikTok. It's super early on. If you're an early adopter, you can take advantage of a lot of the early benefits um, from leveraging a platform like this. However, with the risk of TikTok potentially being banned in the U.S., don't put all your eggs in one basket. Like make sure that you're diversified with your recruitment efforts 
um, if you're um, you know, looking to invest in TikTok advertising. A very practical way is like, you know, if you're not leveraging the meta platform, so Facebook and Instagram, I'd encourage you first to put together a solid Facebook and Instagram um, strategy um, for your recruitment advertising dollars, because it's just a lot more stability there. Your cost per applicant, cost per hire numbers, you know, their TikTok and, and Facebook, like we're seeing mostly similar, like sometimes in some areas, some positions, you'll get better cost per applicant and cost per candidate for through TikTok with the same quality of candidates. Other times, not so much. So TikTok kind of has this more extreme fluctuation, I'd say, of, you know, results. Sometimes it's, it's super, super good. Sometimes it's, it's average or moderate. Where Facebook right now, you'll get consistent results. Um, for your advertising efforts. So again, that would be my advice there is, you know, if you're going to be leveraging TikTok, make sure you balance it out with other platforms as well. Um, so again, in summary here, and then I'm going to open it up for Q&A. So feel free to start rolling in any questions that you might have. Feel free to bring those in now. Um, but TikTok, it, I'd say it definitely, if you're recruiting, looking to recruit a younger workforce, especially frontline workers, hourly workers, TikTok is definitely something you should be considering, you know, right now. Get in now, be an early adopter and reap the benefits, um, but also balance it out with a good strategy across other social media platforms as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. So how to, so boost point just a little bit on us. So we are a recruitment advertising platform that helps you advertise on social media channels. We, like I mentioned earlier on the past 12 months, we've been beta testing the TikTok platform. We are expanding that uh, the, the beta program to other users as well, new and existing customers. If this is something um, you would like to take advantage of, I'm just gonna pull something here up on my screen. Give me one second. There's gonna be a URL here or a QR code that you can scan to request early access to our beta program. And I'm pulling that up right now. Here we go. So if you want early access um, through our platform uh, for our TikTok beta program, running advertising ads, recruitment advertising ads on TikTok, you can either scan this QR code, fill out that form, or go directly type in this URL right here, boostpoint.com forward slash TikTok dash beta. All right, so I've got some questions coming in now. I'm going to be jumping in and answering some of these, reading through a couple of these. Okay, so I, 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 I've got a question here. First question, are, are recruiters slash hiring managers using their own personal TikTok accounts to put out these ads? Great question. Um, we recommend building a, a branded TikTok page. So just like Facebook, you can build... Um, a branded business page on TikTok. And then on behalf of this profile, you can run TikTok ads on behalf of. Um, another thing that TikTok allows you to do that Facebook does not actually is you can run ads on behalf of like a, uh, like a white labeled TikTok account where basically you don't actually need to have a TikTok account to run TikTok ads. So when you're building your TikTok ad, you can build like a mock profile. You can still put in like an image. So it's like branded like your, your business, um, but it's not like you need to actually create a page for this ad to run on behalf of. Um, will we be sending this recording out to the, yes, we're gonna be sending this recording out um, to, to everyone who signed up um, and you'll be getting that probably today or tomorrow sometime. We'll be sending this recording out. <clears throat> and how can we get employees excited about TikTok and social media? Um, great question. Uh, for me, it depends what type of employee and, and what, you know, what their objective is. You know, executives that I talk to, their goal most times is, you know, passive job seekers, like attracting a younger, a more diverse 
um, candidate pool for their positions. And social media is one of the best platforms to do that on. You know, you're, you're attracting people, targeting people with targeted ads, even before they're looking for, for a new opportunity, before they're on Indeed, before they're on ZipRecruiter. So you're able to hit, to capture this huge pool of existing candidates that you're not able to target on other platforms. So that's something executive teams are usually extremely excited about and interested in. You know, if it's, maybe your recruitment team, you know, um, I'd say even, even in building a career, you know, being on the cutting edge of new technology, a lot of people have built their careers on being early adopters to new technology. So if I'm a contributor on a team, that's the lens that I'm going to be thinking through. You know, if I can be help my organization be an early adopter on TikTok advertising for their recruitment ads, you know, that's going to be something that I can own and that I can bring a value to my organization. Because that's a reality right now. There's very few brands right now that are leveraging TikTok for recruitment advertising. And being one of the first can really set yourself apart. TikTok costs. Um, that's a great question. So um, the how of costs and dollars work on these platforms. This is true for any social media platform. It's this bidding style of advertising. So it's all based off of, hey, here's $10,000, here's $1,000. <throat> and then you're targeting a specific audience and your cost for getting your ad in front of a user is dependent on the competition of other advertisers targeting that same user. So I'm prefacing that to say like the cost definitely fluctuates based on the audience that you're targeting and 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 the competition of other advertising other advertisers targeting those same users. With that said, you know there's there's very low entry points. You know you can jump on and you know create a TikTok advertising account and launch a campaign for $100. Um, you could also launch a campaign for $100,000. Really what you start dialing in is what are the key metrics that are important to you and using that as a benchmark for scaling. So again, one of the key performance metrics for most talent acquisition teams is cost per applicant. So if you see, hey, I launched an ad for 30 days, my cost per applicant is $10 and I had, you know, a thousand dollars in that campaign. I generated a hundred applicants. Therefore, if I double my ad spend, I'll double the, the amount of candidates that, that I'm able to produce from that ad. So you can start super low. Um, if you're leveraging Boost Point, our platform for, for this, um, you'll have our platform costs, the subscription to our platform, in addition to your advertising costs on these platforms. All right, jumping to the next question here. Will any of the statistics you referred uh, be provided as follow-up materials to the webinar? Um, 10x more engagement, things like that, um, and the types of videos. Um, we can. My, I'll work with my marketing team to maybe include some of that. Um, we we will you'll definitely get a recording to this webinar, um, and then we'll look at what are some of the statistics <clears throat> that we referenced, and bringing some of that into the material as well. Um, here's another question. Is there any way to tie TikTok advertising data to Google Analytics? Um, the, the, the quick answer to that is if you're leveraging TikTok lead forms, like for your conversion method, not so much. Um, you can, what you could track through Google Analytics is, you know, say there's some organic traffic from the TikTok ads that you're running, you know, people seeing your ads on TikTok, eventually getting to your careers page on your website, you know, and then them ultimately applying from there, you'll see some trickle through um, of analytics through that. 
Um, but most of your analytics will be within the TikTok advertising platform. And then you could maybe bring those into a central rep reporting place. <clears throat> Couple more questions. So here, here's a question about the types of positions. So <clears throat> I said that TikTok's a great place for frontline workers. Um, could I also foresee this being beneficial for technical roles? Example, like a software engineer, um, and is there targeting, you know, enough for that? Um, we've so we've definitely tested, you know, social media channels, including TikTok, for um, more technical, even salaried types of positions. You're since it's not as high volume often as you know frontline workers. Um, it, it's sometimes harder to, to measure and track the ROI. It's definitely more expensive as well. Um, and naturally, again, if you have a more experienced type of position, you know, you're usually going to have to get in front of more people to find the amount of candidates, you know, that, that will be qualified for that type of position. So what, what we found is more technical roles, the, it's harder to get the majority of your candidates that are actually applying that are actually qualified for the position. Um, and so if you go in with that realistic view of, of advertising on these platforms um, and with a realistic expectation of knowing that, hey, most of my candidates most likely will not be you know, qualified because I can't target just software engineers for my ad. But hey, if I get you know 100 candidates, and a percentage of those are qualified, but I know the majority of them are not going to be qualified, you know, and you go in with that, you know, realistic expectation, you know, it's still something that you might want to um, try out. It's just, you're going to have less qualified candidates if you have more technical roles. A um, couple more questions here. All right, so here's a good uh, targeting. So still on the subject of targeting. Um, does Canada look at related to learning technology? Um, all right, this question here is related again to kind of how the targeting works within um, within TikTok and social media ads. So. The question is around, you know, how do you identify, like, say, for a technical role, like, what are the targeting criteria? What what types of targeting criteria can you leverage in TikTok, you know, to maybe hone in the audience a little bit? Um, there, TikTok and Facebook definitely has this data, and it's behavioral based data. So, based on their users, what type of content they're engaging with what their online activity, you know, even on other websites, TikTok and Meta, they're building these data profiles of their users that advertising advertisers can then leverage in to further target their ads. The caveat here to employment recruiting is most of those targeting criterias are removed um, because it's an employment ad. So there's very little that you can actually leverage to target. Some things you can do um, to help tone, hone the, the, the audience a little bit more. This is getting kind of into the weeds here, but I'll dive in because of this question specifically, is you can retarget based off of engagement and video views. So the campaigns that we'll set up for our customers, say we're hitting a pretty broad audience with our initial video and our initial ad. What we can do the second month then is, hey, people that have watched over 50% of that first video, <clears throat> or we can put the pixel on their careers page. People that have already visited your careers page, we can retarget that audience within TikTok and you know Meta's platforms as well. <clears throat> and again, that's not gonna be as large of an audience, but it is one way to kind of hone that targeting where you can take some of your budget and retarget those people. All right, I'm, I'm time for one more question here before we bounce off. We're gonna take this to um, 2.45, we're a couple minutes over. 
But here's the last question here. Is there an ATS that you feel is friendly to social media recruiting? Um, good question here. So <clears throat> around a ATSs, the, to really streamline this experience, you're going to want these candidates to go directly into your ATS, especially if you have, you know, a, 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 a TA team of, you know, multiple people. Um, Cause it's very hard, especially if you're, you know, capturing the candidate data within the TikTok or Facebook platform, <clears throat> you're going to want a way to access that data really quickly so that you can follow up with these candidates. Um, that's one of the benefits with, the, with our platform, Boost Point. It's kind of like a light CRM. So as your ads are out there, people are applying. This data is all collected by our platform because we're integrated with the TikTok and Facebook um, advertising APIs. So we're capturing that candidate data. It's housed within our platform. If you are leveraging a, a one any of the popular ATS platforms, we can then integrate with your ATS um, to send that candidate data right into your ATS. So we can then set up an integration with um, any ATS platform that you currently use so that, the, that those leads are immediately going right into your ATS. All right, so we are going to wrap this up. <clears throat> thanks everyone for all the questions there and engaging. Um, thanks for so much for taking some time with me this afternoon, um, just to <clears throat> learn more about TikTok advertising. Again, if you want access, request early access to um, our TikTok beta program, go ahead, go to that URL, sign up, and someone will reach out to you when we're um, bringing you know people into opening up this. Um, basically, the way this is working, you request access, and then we'll reach out to you to start to open that up um, as we have slots opening up. All right, everybody, thanks so much for your time, and hope to see you on one of our future webinars. Bye.